I'm Susan Dakota Farrier, and you're listening to Travel Fuels Life. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Travel Fuels Life, the show where we share stories, tips, and inspiration to help you live a travel lifestyle. I'm your host, Drew Hanish. And we all know that millennials are the ones that are the driving force behind the digital nomadic revolution. And we also know that the baby boomers are retiring in droves, taking off in those RVs, or taking advantage of some amazing airfares and going off to see the world. But what about Gen Xers? Well, Susan Dakota Ferrier is my guest today, and she just so happens to be a member of that often neglected generation. And she has decided to shine a spotlight on both group travel services for Gen Xers and the way that they travel. And she also has a travel blog out there that is devoted to Gen Xers. It is genxtraveler.com. So the MTV generation finally has a voice. And with me having planned a trip up to Philadelphia for the Christmas season... She was kind enough to drive up from her home in Maryland and meet me in the breakfast area of the Hampton Inn Convention Center located in Center City, Philadelphia. You may hear a little background noise, and that's the reason why. So we had a nice chat about Gen X Traveler, and so we're going to pick up this conversation where I'm asking Susan about when she first started her blog. My blog went up the night before I went to my first TBEX. I had heard about it like a couple of weeks before, uh, I guess it would have been 2015. I heard about it and I said, you know, I think I need to need to do this. Um, it also lit the fire under my butt to get the site up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you were just starting out at oh, that I point. Was, oh, I was really, really just starting uh, out. So how did you get started? Did you start doing, uh, were, were you just waiting to get the blog up or were you already doing some social media kind of stuff? Or? Uh, no, actually I wasn't doing much social media. I mean, I was on Facebook for, you know, my personal Facebook stuff. Right. Um, but I was a... A freelance writer for about 10 years at that point. Okay. Um, so I was doing print and, uh, and I started out doing just general, you know, I wrote about women's issues. I wrote about a little bit of politics, a little bit of fashion, a little bit of health and lifestyle and things like that. Um, and then I guess in 2011, I decided I wanted to start a travel blog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's when it was. Um, it was after my trip to Egypt in 2011. And um, so I did that. I started the travel blog. It was just a WordPress site, you know, um, and didn't really, um, it didn't really go anywhere. Mm-hmm. I didn't really have any any knowledge of how to promote it or any of that. Um, and I quickly learned that you don't just start a blog and, and people will come. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so it wasn't that way. Um, and so I, you know, shelved that for a while. And then in 2015, I decided I wanted to, I wanted to become more serious about it. Um, and I guess... Well, I had already started the blog. It wasn't live. I mean, I was building my site, and I came across Alexa Meisler of Break Into Travel Writing. Mm -hmm. Um, She does a Travel Writers Academy, and I got into the academy, and that's when I started to learn about social media and all of this other stuff that goes along with writing the content. (laughs) Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, So you you, you really got to become a web expert after a while, just understanding how do I build a website how yes. do I succeed in yeah. social media? Where do I? Yeah. So, so did you spend a lot of time watching those those videos that say how to get Instagram followers and all of that? Or um, no, it's not really that because I've been part of this um, Travel Writers Academy since day one. Um, I've had like a mentor, and I've had like these mastermind groups that I go to with. Um, the other members of the academy and we have monthly Google Hangouts and stuff like that so we bounce things off of each other and and then of course she has um, like each month she does like a structured um, like lesson almost you know Mm -hmm. do at your own pace uh, kind of thing and uh, 
so that's how I started learning is through all that and you know and then it just evolves from so, there so it's kind of having mentors I mean you yes. have your master mastermind group you can contact yes. anybody and you're yes. all kind of helping each other yeah and people are at different levels you yeah. know we're not all in the same spot so yeah okay yeah so how now of course you focus on Gen X yep Generation X so how did you decide on the direction or the the niche everybody tells you you need to find a niche and how, how soon did it evolve into a niche was that right off the bat or no well with the first blog the first travel blog I started um it was just it was just very loosely just travel but as I started reading more blogs I started to realize that they were all written by either baby boomers mm -hmm. or millennials nobody was or at least nobody was admitting to being a Gen Xer. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, there are Gen X uh, bloggers out there. Um, there doesn't seem to be as many as those other groups. Um, and I just felt like nobody was writing, not just for me, but for people in that category. Yeah. Um, that once again, Generation X had been forgotten. Mm. <laughs> and I said, well, you know what? There's a vacuum here, so why not? Right. You know, why not fill this vacuum? Well, and you know it because you live it every I, day. Uh, that's right? exactly right. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, and that's what I say is that my blog is written for Gen Xers by a Gen Xer. So when thinking about millennials, the first thing I think is that I mean, uh, in a way, I got inspired to start traveling and doing the writing and the social media by watching them because they seem to just take to all of that naturally. Yes. And then baby boomers seem to be their retirement age and they're following the old standard of I'm going to wait till I retire and then uh -huh. I'm going to see the world kind of thing. Right. So where do the Gen Xers fit in terms of their travel style, do you think? Well, it seems that, um, well, they don't travel for as long. They're not, they're not like the millennials who are digital nomads and they just pick up and, you know, they just go live in a different country for a few months and then move on to the next country or whatever. Gen Xers don't seem to be doing that. Um, you know, and as you said, you know, the baby boomers, they're retired. So, I mean, not all of them, the younger ones are not, um, but they will be mm -hmm. fairly soon. And, um, you know, so they've got the time available to them. But Gen X, we're squarely in the middle of careers. Yeah. You know? Not only are we in the middle of careers, but we're also, um, we might have college age kids. I even have friends who have little kids, which surprises the heck out of me since I'm on the older end of Generation X. Mm. Um, and I mean, so, so some of them still have young kids. And then there's also the people who, um, are now raising their grandkids, you know, or at least assisting in some way with their grandkids. And they have aging parents. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they just don't have the time to travel. So they aren't doing these extended, massive trips. They're doing, you know, weekend trips, you know, extended weekend trips, or they also do a lot of extended family trips, mm -hmm. um, like multi generational trips. And they also, you know, they'll use their time off that they get from their job to travel but they aren't they aren't going for those long stretches yeah so do and they're you, not doing multiple trips a year necessarily either yeah so do you think though that there's a point now where a lot are becoming empty nesters and maybe they're thinking what yes. should i be doing but then what happens when they get to that point do they because they've so pushed travel into being just vacation mode kind of thing is, is there an i mean well, how do you break somebody from, it's from interesting that? that you say that because um well i'll use my brother as an example his youngest just went off to college this year and um he and his wife have jumped right into this whole travel thing i mean they're and they were the, they didn't even do they didn't even really do vacations all that much mm. while the kids were growing up. Um, you know, and all of a sudden they've got a passport and they're going here and going <laughs> there. And, you know, I mean, for the longest time I was the only one in my family that even had a passport. So, you know, so, and I love seeing, you know, the people I love do this kind of thing, yeah. you know, to, to see them being able to do the things that I've had the luxury of doing. Mm-hmm. 
So you, how much uh, travel have you done and did your travel really start during this three year period or no. were you traveling a lot before no. that? Um, my travel, well, because, because I don't have kids, I've always, I didn't have to have to, have to worry about like that empty nest, you know, and waiting till the kids were gone. I've been able to do a little bit more of it, but I don't think I really started traveling until like somewhere around 2005, maybe, mm-hmm. um, maybe a little before that my husband and I would go to New Orleans. Like we just loved New Orleans. And then we started doing some cruises and each cruise got a little longer than the last one. And what we liked about cruising was the fact that we got to see lots of places. Um, but we also love being on the water. So that's, you know, the appeal of cruises for us. Um, and then in 2009, my mother uh, got sick with cancer, mm. and she was 65, and she passed, so she passed away at 65, and she left a little bit of money, and my mother was a traveler. Mm. She loved to travel, um, and had like her whole entire life she loved to travel. Didn't always have the luxury of doing it, but she always loved it, and since she left me a little bit of money, I said that's where I was going to spend it, was was traveling um and so my first trip after she died was i guess we took a cruise Mm -hmm. it was a pretty traumatic time uh, so things are a little blurry i think we took a cruise but we we may have already had that scheduled and uh but then after that i went to egypt um and when she was sick i i had a friend who had was living in Egypt at the time. And I kept, one of the things I told her is that if she got better, that we would go to Egypt. Um, And needless to say, she didn't get better, but Mm -hmm. I still went to Egypt in 2011. Yeah. And, um, and that was my first trip abroad. Okay. And I and I went solo. And you went at a time of <laughs> upheaval, correct? I did. I did. I actually was supposed to leave um, on, January 27th or 28th, something like that, of 2011. And on January 25th, uh, uh, their uh, Arab Spring, their yeah. revolution started. <laughs> did, you, did, and, uh, did, did you pause at that point and go, what am I doing? I was determined to still go. Okay. And, but the U.S. government had other ideas. They stopped all flights. Um, uh, and so that got, that put the pause on it. But then two weeks later, Mubarak stepped down and, um, and then two weeks after that I went. So it was a month into their revolution when I went and there were no tourists, no tourists from anywhere. <laughs> I mean, I had the pyramids all to myself and all Holy of the, cow. you know, all the ruins, all the pyramids, the, the bazaar, the, I mean, all of it. <laughs> this, it was I, me and the locals. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, this is probably not a, a I mean, because I don't like crowds. Yeah. So for me, you know, I'm going, oh, that'd be fantastic to not have crowds. But I don't know that I want to have to have a revolution kick up for, yeah. for me to yeah. get, you know, right. quick entry into here or into there. One of the things that it really spoiled me for, though, is... I got to go to these great places and have no tourists in any of my pictures. Mm. So now I get so annoyed when I'm in touristy places and the <laughs> tourists are all in my pictures. It's like, get away, get away. <laughs> right? Oh, wow. So, so what was the feeling when you got there? I mean, did you feel, feel tense through any of it or, or did you just kind of feel like, I'm just going to get guided through this. It'll be, it'll be fine. Well, the flight over was the best flight I'd ever been on because there was nobody on the plane. Mm. It was me and a couple of, I, I don't know, I bet there was only a dozen people on that plane. <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh, that was wonderful, um, but getting and like I said, keep in mind this was my first trip abroad. So getting off the plane and having men carrying automatic weapons and mm-hmm. all of that, and having military equipment in the streets and you know this and that, it was yeah, it was intimidating. And they weren't letting people into the airport to meet their guests, so it wasn't like there was even anybody there to meet me on arrival. Um, I did have, my friend was still living there at that time, um, and I stayed with her, but the first week I was with her, um, I did everything on my own. Um, 
but she wasn't even there at the airport to to pick me mm. up you know and they were they were under curfew and this and that like no going out after dark and yeah so it was yeah it was a little crazy and it was it was definitely intimidating however I will go pretty much anywhere at this point. I was going to say, you, yeah, yeah. You, it's, yeah. it's kind of like you hit the high hurdle right off the bat, yeah. and now everything just seems like... Yeah, oh, and yeah. you know, when people talk to me about travel, and they, you know, we inevitably hear people say, well, aren't you afraid? And I do have to clarify with people that my risk tolerance is probably higher than most people's because of having had that experience. yeah. Well, and but but you still made that choice to go do it even mm-hmm. after. So there was a certain certain spunk in you that said, "I'm just not going to let this deter yeah. me from from going." And I'm so glad I did. It was just such an interesting time to be there. I mean, one of the coolest things that happened was uh, my friend and I had gone uh, the second week I was there. We had gone to the Sinai, uh, so we drove out to the Sinai, and. Um, they were having their first vote on ratifying their constitution. Mm. And I went with her to the polling place when she voted. And that was the first um, first non-rigged vote that they had had in over 30 years. And like there was this real sense of being part of history. Yeah. Like it was one of those moments you knew. It, like when I tell people that they... Um, I'll hear people who were um, in Germany when the Berlin Wall came down, and they they think, oh, that's kind of, yes, I know that feeling. Yeah. Um, But that's like the closest thing that I ever hear of people that can like relate to what I'm talking about with that. Right. Yeah. So so as you were going uh, around Egypt, did you change your plans at all in terms of all the stuff that you wanted to see, or you just went... Went for I, it. No, I just just did it. Okay, just, just went, just did it. So, what was your feeling? Because you had told me earlier before we started that you know the the pyramids were one place that, as a child, you wanted to yeah. go to. What was your feeling when you first saw them? They are just so much more vast than you can even imagine. They're just so massive. And just, you know, they're fascinating because the Great Pyramids sit right outside of Cairo. I mean, you can see the the city of Cairo, Mm. I mean, (laughs) right, you know, from the Great Pyramids. You know, and some people knock that, but I think that's kind of fascinating that that this major city built up right around, you know, uh, the cradle of civilization, you know? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, what's funny is that you don't expect it because when you see pictures of the pyramids, they don't take no, it from an don't. angle where you can no. see Cairo in the no. background. Nope. Yeah. Nope. So that I mean that's that that three-dimensional thing I yes. talk about when you actually go, it just feels so much different than any picture you've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. I just I uh, posted a picture of my Horseshoe Bend trip. Yes. And I had seen millions of pictures of sure. Horseshoe Bend and when I posted my picture, I had actually taken a picture while the speedboat was going through the water Uh and so you could see how small that speedboat was and a friend of mine said wow I never realized it was that big because you just can't capture Mm -hmm. it in a in a photograph and and give people that Mm -hmm. that experience yeah so I'm assuming that when you do your group travels which is what your your main project is now that you probably don't look for revolutions and and ways to jump people into uh, chaos right off the bat. What? How, no. <laughs> how, how do you? Um, what you're having to do is basically probably work on changing people's mindsets in terms of getting out and traveling. Like I know, as a Gen Xer myself, I like I'm very independent, uh-huh. and so it's it. I would. Maybe if I didn't have the travel background, right. I might be nervous about doing it because I don't yeah. want to do it by myself. It's like right. people going to a movie theater. Right. Some people just won't go to a movie theater yeah. and watch a movie by right. themselves. But then I don't have that feeling like I want to be around a group all right. the time. So how do you work that out to... Right. Um, yeah, no, I, I understand. I understand what you're saying. Um, and I and I think that a lot of people feel that way. Um but I also think that there's some misconceptions about what group travel is mm-hmm. um, and what it... I try to look at it differently. Like, there are things that I don't think group travel should be a group of 50 people on a bus. 
I, I, that's not the group travel that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, my trips are capped at 12 people. So they're intimate. They're not huge groups. Um, and I try to build in free time for people to explore on their own so that they don't feel like they, you know, are just going from place to place and and not doing the things that want, they want to do. You know, and whether that's them just kicking back at the hotel and relaxing or whether or not that's going to see, you know, just I don't know, go sit in a cafe or whatever. I say that because that's one of those things that I like to do when I'm traveling. Right. Let's go to one of the local places and just sit and watch people. And, you know, so um, so that comes to mind. Um, and the other thing is, I think that one of the misconceptions also is that group travel means that you're going to stay in chain hotels and stuff like that. And mm. that's also something that I try not to do. Um, I want to be staying in more boutique -y places um, that are in neighborhoods. Because mm -hmm. I think one of the great things about travel is getting into the neighborhoods. Um, I think that's when you get the local taste of a place more so than seeing the sights. And that's not to say that we don't see the sights. I mean, there's a reason touristy things are touristy. Right. I mean, there's a reason for it. It's because they're the highlights. They're the things you're supposed to say. So you don't want to steer clear of them completely, mm -hmm. but you also want to have other experiences. Um, like my Mexico City trip, um, there's like a cooking class uh, in that. And it's actually in somebody's home. It's not in like a classroom, you know, a, mm -hmm. a, a classroom kitchen setting it's in somebody's home um there's also a tequila tasting that's in somebody's home um you know so there's that kind of thing that also gives you interaction that you might not normally get with the locals right so when you're saying the the ability of somebody just wants to stay in their hotel room if they're just not into drinking tequila then that particular night maybe they can go they off can. and do their own they can. sort of thing yeah okay yeah so it kind of yeah, helps as long as they're there when the uh, when the van pulls out right yeah <laughs> yeah because that's I mean uh, when I get when somebody says group travel the first thing that I think of is uh, probably a lot of people all having to be held up from doing the stuff that they want to do because half the time is just herding cats right and right. trying to get these large groups right. to to move yeah and it, right it, it just doesn't so that's never attracted me to that so right. it's interesting to hear right you know your yeah, change in focus think, yeah i think my approach is a little bit different than uh than some others um and but that also means that my prices are a little bit higher than some of the others as well, um, because you're... It's a, it's a boutique experience. It's, it's a more of a boutique experience, right. yes. And I try to work with all local guides and, you know, people that are, you know, know the area that, uh, you know, even if they aren't native to the area, if they've been there a long time and, you know this is the business, you know, they've fallen in love with the place and that's why they're doing tours. Yeah. I mean, that's okay too. Um, you know, because that also gives a different perspective. So how many, uh, so what places are you thinking of having some of these journeys? Well, I've got the Mexico city trip. I have, uh, I was working on putting something together for Baja and that was going to be in February or March, but with all the uh, stuff that's going on in, around Tijuana, right. I've put that on hold. Okay. Um, but I do love Baja, and I would really like to share that with people. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the places. I'm also working on something for Portugal. Um, I went la well earlier this year actually, um, and scouted the scouted out Portugal and. I really think Portugal is a place you need to go now because mm. if you wait much longer, it's going to be so overrun that uh, it's very trendy right now. And I think it's going to be so overrun that uh, you don't even want to go. And that's another thing. I try to go to places in the less touristy seasons, you know, rather than going at peak season in the middle of the summer. I don't even travel in the summer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I understand that that's when a lot of people, especially people with family tra uh, travel, but 
um, I don't know that that's when you are going to get the best experience. I think that you do get a better experience when there's fewer tourists running around. I, I guess this is the plus to those, especially those becoming empty nesters, because then they're not so tied down to, I can only take a trip at this time of year or take a trip at this time of year. Yes, you yes can, exactly. You can spread it out a little yeah, bit sure, more. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yep, definitely. Um, so let's see, what other trips? Oh, I think that I'm going to start working on a trip for uh, Chile. Ah. Uh, the Atacama uh, Desert and stuff. I mm -hmm. think that that might be interesting. You got to hit a James Bond location if, for uh, me for me to go. Th then. There you go. Yeah, there you go. That's what I uh, yeah, right. was talking the James about the Bond other guy. day. Yeah. yeah, because uh, Quantum of Solace, there's uh, the the big uh, fortress that they're in at the end is actually a uh, astronomy. Uh, building. Oh, okay. And they, uh, so it's not a hotel like it is right. in the movie, okay, and they right. didn't blow it up, <laughs> even though it looks like they blew it up. And so, special that, effects. Yeah, exactly. But that's one of those, like, I, there's places like Morocco that I want to go. Uh, Morocco's and I go there. really yeah. high on my list. Yeah. I mean, personally, Morocco's really high on my list. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that. Well, that'd be fun. Yeah. So I will. I'll let you know when I've got that Morocco trip together. That's also okay. on my radar, and Mongolia is on my radar as well. Uh -huh. So I okay. also try to go to some of the more offbeat places, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, nobody's talking about going to Mongolia except for me. I mean, right. you know, Mongolia. Alert. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and actually, that's probably a good strategy from the standpoint that those are places that maybe you don't want to just go to by yourself. Right. You you want to be at least with a small group right. to have that comfort of, you know, I'm in a place where I don't know that any English is going to be right. spoken and planning might be a little bit more difficult. So having somebody right. do some of that for you. I do think that there are certain places that are more uh, lend themselves better to small group trips than others and that are more appropriate to go to for small group trips. And Egypt is one of those places or anywhere in the Middle East that I don't I personally would not go on a big group trip. I mean, people think, oh, well, I'll be safer if I go on a big group trip. But I feel that those the buses and things like that tend to be targets in those places because they can do the most collateral damage. Um, and at the same time, as a woman, if I weren't me, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I might not want to go to some of these more male dominated countries um, as a solo traveler. So that's where small group travel comes in and is perfect. Well, and it's a good good way to get, especially if you haven't traveled a lot outside yes. the country, to get that experience right, get your feet with wet. somebody else. Yeah, yeah get your feet yeah. wet a little. You yeah. know, and hopefully, hopefully, one of the residuals of it is that friendships get built. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you're in a small, intimate group like that, you know, you can establish some real relationships. And I would love to see the people that go on my trips, you know, go on other trips together. You know, right, like. Finding travel companions, travel buddies, you know, mm -hmm. other people that they're, they're kindred spirits with. That's true. I, that's one of the things I miss in terms of doing solo travel is that I have little conversations. I've made friends all over the place, but they're friends for a moment. Yes. And then we never keep in touch. In fact, it's the old, somebody hands you, uh, here's, here's my number, you know, yeah. let's stay in touch or here's yeah. my email address. Yep. And then just somehow you never seem to find yeah. the time to make that connection. Right. You right. Know? So it's, yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. true. Having, well, just going to T-Bex. Sure. You know, sure. Uh, this was my first experience being out amongst other people who travel. And mm -hmm. I think we all sort of generally like to bond anyway, because that's what we're all about is getting right. out and meeting people and seeing new cultures and well we bond over our experiences mm -hmm. you know if you talk to some like sometimes when i talk to people who are not travelers like i shy off from telling them like all the details of the story of a story because of the fact that i figure oh, this is you know this is like watching the slides after after vacation <laughs> right yes there was something called slides for you millennials out there. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yes. it's instagram yes. now right? <laughs> yes it's instagram now uh, but i you know i don't want to bore people but when i'm talking to other travelers i never feel like I'm boring them mm -hmm. um, and I never am bored listening to them either. So, um, 
you know, so, so like I said, hopefully people will build those relationships around travel. Yeah. So if somebody wants to find out more about the trips that you're doing, what uh, you have two websites which way I have yeah yeah there's so there's two websites there's my blog okay um and that is that is strictly a blog um it, I started it in 2015 like I said and um that's genxtraveler.com okay and it's written exclusively by me uh at this point anyways at some point <laughs> maybe I'll have some guest uh posts um so there's that, and then there's also uh, Gen Explorations, and that's the site for the for the trips. That's okay. where the trips are, um, and it's Gen Explorations. It's G E N X mm-hmm. Explorations. It's not okay. So there's no E in there. And we'll yeah. we'll put the yeah. link to it in show notes so yeah. that uh, so if you go to travelfuelslife.com and look up the episode, you'll see all the notes yeah. in there and any other links to. So you, you also are uh, active on Twitter. I'm I on see. Twitter. Yes, I'm on Twitter. And you I, actually do a, a chat on Yeah, I also Twitter. have the Twitter chat on uh, the first Wednesday of each month. We do the Gen X travel chat. Okay. Um, so hashtag Gen X travel. Yeah. Um, and that is uh, 12 noon, 12 to 1, uh, first Wednesday of each month. And every month we have a different topic. And, um, and then I also have my, my community or my mm-hmm. Facebook community as well. Um, and that's, uh, well, if you just do uh, Gen X travel, you'll find that, okay. uh, for, for Facebook, just search that. And I can also give you the link for that as well. Um, and then I'm on Instagram as Gen X travel, traveler, Gen X traveler on Instagram, Gen X traveler on, actually I'm Gen X traveler on all of them. Right. So. And, <laughs> and you just, uh, you just got back from Paris. Correct. I was in London and Paris. So, because I was rifling through some of your photos uh-huh. from that trip. Yep. And yep. so, uh, so highlights. Uh, but what was there anything you went to that you would say, not enough people go to this when they go to, it? so that we can, you know, funnel all the people away from the Louvre over to something else, so that we can get into the Louvre without a crowd. Um. Well. I opted to go to uh, La Chapelle instead of to Notre Dame. Uh-huh. Um, I figured they were both Gothic cathedrals, mm. and I knew that I knew that Notre Dame was going to be mobbed, and uh, La Chapelle not quite so much. And I really felt like I made the right choice mm-hmm. in doing that. Um, it wasn't mobbed. It's beautiful, mm. um, and the money there they're working on restoring it. So the money is going for that. And I understand that they also are now having concerts there in the evening. And Mm. I understand the acoustics in the place are amazing. Now I didn't get to do that. Um, but that's something that I think that, that if I were to go back, I would definitely, definitely want to do that. Uh, We were talking about this before, and I guess we're the only two people who have gone through the Louvre in like two hours. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would have spent more time there, but uh, but not not my wasn't for my husband. Yeah. And if I were traveling by myself, I would have spent more time there, probably. Yeah, Par- Paris was. Uh, I had one day, so and boy, what do you do? And I had a list of places I yeah. wanted to go, but I did go up in the Eiffel Tower. Oh, did you? And I thought, yeah, why not? I'll. I'll and I'm not big on. I, I like to say it's not that I'm afraid of heights. I'm. A, afraid of sudden falls yes. and quick yeah, deaths. Yes, I totally get right? that. Yes, that's yeah. how I feel about it. So I, I We're ch- wired that way, you know. Is that, yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> so I challenge myself every once in a while. So I'll look and I'll go, why am I doing this? But then I'll go ahead and try it anyway. So, and it was, it was fun. It was, I didn't walk up. I don't know how people walk yeah. to the top of the Eiffel Tower, but. Yeah, I'll, I don't know how many steps it is, but yeah, it's plenty. <laughs> yeah, it's great, great view up there, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, have you, sure. Have you been? You, so no, you we didn't do that. We okay. didn't do that now. Yeah, yeah, so that's a fun one. That's one of those where I said, you know what, I'll brave the crowd. Yeah. What the heck, it's worth, it's worth checking it out, so. Yeah, there wasn't even crowds when I was there because it was the first week in October, so the tourist season was over and, uh, you know, it wasn't the holidays yet, so yeah. they didn't have that crowd yet so 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 where are you off to next my next trip is to cancun uh cancun area not actually cancun Mm -hmm. um 
So that's in January. So and have, that's you, the, have you been there before? I or? have not. No. Okay. I've been to Cozumel, but not Cancun. I kind of stay away from those kind of places. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the more touristy places just in... Not that Paris and London aren't touristy. They certainly are. Um, but when I say touristy places, I mean like the places. More. The, right. That, uh, like, I like places that have some culture that aren't just, you know, bar hopping and this yeah. and that. I want some culture. I want some history. I want, I want some adventure. I like some adventure. Um, one of my husband's friends seems to think that I am a total daredevil and doesn't know how he's married to me because he thinks I'm a daredevil. But, I mean, I don't consider myself that so, by any so stretch. What would be something you have done that you would consider to be daredevil or that they probably they, consider they, daredevil? That they consider daredevil. Um, well, my my profile picture on my Facebook, uh, my personal Facebook is me sitting on a quad on a dune and apparently that's not pe something that people my age do uh, which I don't I don't know because like my brother races quads and so does my nephew and my brother is you know a couple years younger than me <laughs> so to me the, people my age do those kind of things so, you know zip lining I like zip lining for my 50th birthday I jumped out of an airplane mm, uh, uh, yeah so. see now that's stretching it for me yeah yeah uh, yes yeah, so. I would call that adventure definitely yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that, uh, I, I have a feeling that my husband for Christmas has bought me a opportunity to drive like a Ferrari or something like that. Mm. I want to do it on the open road though. And see, we'll be posting this, this audio after, after. Christmas, so he's so, not going to get to hear it. Yeah. 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 He just keeps telling me that I am going to be ecstatic. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see. We might have to get an update on that and post it on the show. Well, notes. I've been I've been dropping <laughs> lots and lots of hints that this yeah. is something I want to do. So uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Very good. Well, well I appreciate you uh, taking the time today and and giving us a little uh, insight into Gen Xers and and group travel well, and, and giving us a little feel for what you're doing in terms of of group travel. Thank I, you. Uh, I think it'll be a, a definitely something that. You know, from a standpoint of me, one of these days I need to test the waters on group travel. But I think I would be much more interested in the small group than I would be in the. So I may yeah. be getting in contact with you soon on, on something. I'd love so, to have you on a trip. That yeah. would be so much fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, great. Well, uh, thank you very much, and uh, I appreciate you driving up to Philadelphia. We. I, I, flew up here and I was like, Ooh, who can I interview while I'm in, you know, and you're, you're right across in Maryland. So yep. not too far yep. away. Yep. So this is great. Yep. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and head to the show notes page at travelfuelslife.com slash podcasts. Look for episode number six and find all of Susan's communication channels out there, including her website, genxtraveler.com genexplorations.com her twitter chat link and also all of her social media and if you're thinking about getting out there as a gen xer and doing some of this travel well i'll tell you what head to travelfuelslife.com slash shop where you can find some of my favorite travel tools including the sturdy little bag that i take with me everywhere to avoid baggage fees this one little carry-on is so sturdy that I took all of my podcasting equipment in there and closed for four days. So this thing really holds up. It's going strong. You can find that on my Amazon shop. That is travelfuelslife.com slash shop. I will get a little commission off of the sale, but you will pay the same low price you would pay if you bought it directly through Amazon without my link. So I really do appreciate if you go that route and throw a few pennies my way. And until next time, have a great week, safe travels, and thanks for listening to Travel Fuels Life.